When you first start playing Echoes of Wisdom, the first outfit that you're given at the beginning of the game is the disguise outfit that is supposed to conceal your identity. And I mean, come on, you're Princess Zelda. Everyone is supposed to know who you are. And luckily for us, later on in the game, we do unlock a bunch of different outfits. So let's show you how to exactly do that. You're pretty much stuck with the disguise outfit all the way until you complete the quest known as Still Missing. This means that you have to wear the disguise outfit while you do the Garuda dungeons and rifts, the Zora dungeons and rifts, all up until certain events go down at Hyrule Castle. But once that is all complete, you'll know that you have finally arrived in the mid game point. And how that's known is because you're given the outfit adventure travel attire. And the moment you're given that, the main story quest still missing says complete. Now because Zelda doesn't need to hide herself anymore at this point in the game, that means now outfits are much readily available. And this can be found when you open up your settings and you get the notification that more drops or rewards for amiibos has been added to the game. And that is a really good sign because amiibos actually have three outfits that you can get by scanning them. Now, here's the best part. All the amiibo outfits are broken down into three categories. So basically, you only really need three amiibos to get the rewards. The first amiibo outfit that you get is known as the blue attire, which is just a variant like all the amiibo outfits of other outfits that are naturally in the game. For this, all you have to do is just scan any Princess Zelda or Sheik amiibo after the events at Hyrule Castle. The next outfit is going to be the Black Cat Cloaks, which is crazy because now Zelda is a furry, but that's okay. To get this one, all you have to do is scan any Ganon amiibo, Guardian amiibo, Bokoblin amiibo, or any of the four Champion amiibos. The next one is going to be the Red Tunic, which pretty much just makes you have Link's outfit. But to get this, well, just like I mentioned, all you have to do is scan any Link amiibo. And there are so many Link amiibo. So hopefully that makes you feel a little relieved about the amiibos you have. If you have three of those, you can use that for any types of amiibo scanning in the game. And it beats not having to buy a bunch of amiibo if you decide to go with the amiibo scanning features in the game. The next outfit that we'll be talking about is the customary attire, which is basically the same exact outfit you get from the amiibo, the blue attire, except this one is a classic Zelda outfit. Now, in order in order to get this, you're going to have to talk to a girl that is outside of Hyrule Castle. Her name is Rami, and she's going to hand you a clover. And what you're going to have to do is bring that clover all the way to the king. While you're talking to the king, something's going to happen where this girl is just going to run outside chasing after her dog, and you're going to have to make your way towards where she went. The clue for this is just talking to all the soldiers and going down the road all the way until you eventually arrive at a rift where you're going to find the dog that she chased after. All you have to do is just enter into the rift and do the usual things you normally do in the game. Save Tri's friends by completing a few little puzzles here and there. And once you're done with that, she'll be reunited with her dog and you'll go back to Hyrule Castle and talk to the king and the quest pretty much completes and the king hands you over the customary attire. The next outfit is the silk pajamas. Now, while wearing pajamas doesn't seem that cool, it actually has a really crazy effect. In this game, you could just sleep on a bed in the middle of nowhere to restore Princess Zelda's hearts. But did you know there are actually higher quality beds that you can echo in the game? In fact, at the midpoint of the game, you can learn Princess Zelda's bed as an echo, which is already a higher level bed that restores a ton of hearts. And what the silk pajamas do is also recover hearts faster while you're on a bed. And combining both of these will increase your hearts regained very fast so it would be a great thing to use in battle if you don't want to bother with potions or anything like that but here's how to get it you have to head over to gerudo town and you have to talk to dona if this quest does not show up you most likely have not done the gerudo desert or you have not reached the midpoint of the game if you did those things then this quest line will show up and dona's just gonna have a little request for you to test out all the guards and the security around that so for this just make your way up over here at the main town area and then go into this small building in the left which is blocked off earlier in the game until this quest once you enter into here it's going to be just like the beginning of the game where you're trying to get around the hyrule soldiers you're gonna have to make your way in this area so let me just show you my clean run where i did it
I almost got caught at the end, but I was able to open up the chest fast enough to have the silk pajamas, and that's how you get that one. The next outfit that we're going to be talking about is the cat clothes, which is the standard brown one, and it's going to be the same thing as the black cat clothes, and what I didn't mention before is that cat clothing allows you to actually communicate with cats in the game, which is ridiculous. There's so many cats. So please, someone let me know if they went around the world and find any dialogue from a cat randomly somewhere that is interesting. I'm so curious. Put it in the comments below. But minus all that, to get this outfit, you have to head over to Kakariko Village and talk to this old man over here who you're going to have to interact with. What's funny is I'm actually wearing the amiibo outfit there. And the purpose of his quest line is to suggest you go to a lady at a shop to get other cat clothing. It's really cool to see that the developers accounted for the fact that you might be wearing a cat cat outfit while starting this quest from the amiibo. Anyway, in order to get the actual cat outfit, you're going to have to head over to this lady at the bottom right corner at the shop after talking to the old man. And she's going to mention that a cat is sitting on somewhere where she needs to dig. So what you're going to want to do is make your way all the way to the top right portion of Kakariko Village to bait this cat away from it. And all you have to do is just use an echo of a fish in order to get the cat to move. You'll pull out her secret treasure that's located under that. And as a reward, she'll then hand over to you the cat clothes. Now, at this point, you don't have to finish the old man's quest because you already have the cat clothing. So if you feel like finishing the quest here and talking to all the cats, go for it. Otherwise, you're done and you have this outfit. Now, since we are already in Kakariko Village, let's talk about the sleep dojo that is going to be responsible for giving you the green tunic outfit. Basically, Link's outfit and the counterparts to the amiibo, the red tunic. In order to get this outfit, you're going to have have to complete every single challenge that the sleep dojo has to offer. Now, in order to get every challenge to even unlock in the game, you're going to have to beat all the dungeons that are in the game before Eternal Forest. This dojo will keep updating with challenges as you beat every main dungeon inside of the game. You'll know that you are on the final sleep dojo challenge when you get the final titans gathering challenge that shows up, which is pretty much you having to beat every single dungeon boss in the game in under 15 minutes. If you're able to do this successfully, you'll then get yourself the green tunic. While also doing these challenges and completing them, you'll also get the reward of the katana that's in here, which is going to be used to create a really powerful robot known as the Roboblin. It's really cool and I have more info for that in my automaton video. The next outfit is the stamp suit, which is not my favorite, but it's pretty unique for Zelda to wear. And the only benefit it does is just proves that you've completed the stamp rally. Now for this outfit, it's going to require you to go all over the map to interact with various different stamp spots. Now the gist of this is really simple. You meet him for the first time, he gives you a stamp sheet, you get five stamp locations, you then get another stamp sheet, and it's going to happen five times. There are a total of 25 stamps. So all you need to do is fill out five stamp cards and you'll get various rewards for completing each stamp card. Five stamps will give you 10 fresh milk, 10 stamps, three golden eggs 15 a fairy bottle 20 will give you five monster stones and 25 will give you the stamp suit now just for the sake of those who are curious where to find all the stamps i've marked it up on my map if you want to screenshot the full image and if you want to follow along by region here are all the locations where you can find stamps in the farren wetlands you'll find four stamp locations one right over here one located on the bottom left side here one towards the bottom right at this specific location. And then one all the way at the top right in this body of water over here. In the southern forest area, there is only one stamp that can be located right over here in this location facing Lake Hylia. In the eastern Hyrule field, there is going to be a stamp location right over here. In the Gerudo desert area, you'll find four of these stamps. One located towards the bottom right of the desert in this spot. One right towards the left of Gerudo Town on the left over here. One left of the Oasis over here. And then one all the way in the top left corner over here. In Hyrule Field, you'll find a stamp location right outside of Hyrule Ranch. You'll find another stamp location outside of Kakariko Village and all the way to the left of the village. There are four stamp locations in the Elden Volcano. One located right over here. One all the way at the northmost part of it. 
and then one located in the middle of a lava spot that you have to carefully get to. And the last one's going to be located all the way to the right side over here. The locations for the stamps in Jabul Water is one over here, one over here by Seaside Village, one north of it right over here, and all the way in the top left right over here. Now, Hebra Mountain is going to actually contain four. You'll find one right in between both mountain ranges in Hebra Mountain in the water. So it's kind of not Hebra Mountain, but in between Hebra Mountain. Then you'll find one all the way over here, which is right by Conde's house or the big hut that you find in the snow area. You'll find one all the way on the left spot over here. And then later on in the game, once rifts have developed up in the Hebra Mountain area, you'll find one all the way up over here, which requires you to actually go into a rift to clear it for the stamp then to show up. And then you'll be able to get the final one and finally get the stamp outfit. This outfit is the dancing outfit. And for this one, it's going to require you to go all the way into the Gerudo Desert in the Oasis area and enter into this specific tent. In this tent is where you're going to talk to this lady and enter into challenges where you are going to have to harvest seeds. And it comes in three levels. Standard, and if you beat that, you'll then unlock Vibrant, and if you beat that, you'll then unlock the Ultimate Seeds. And I was able to get through the first two by just using a Tornando Echo that I got from the desert, throwing it out and just spamming it non-stop at every single seed I saw. But when it came down to the Ultimate Challenge, which is the one you need to clear with 60 seeds harvested in order to get the outfit so i then just realized i just have to spin around to do it and the pattern is always going to be the same if you fail and have to repeat so just do it over again until you get the hang of it and then just follow the exact pattern you need to and you'll be able to simply get the dancing outfit right after you're done just a quick tidbit the golden fan that is in here you get after completing the vibrant one and that's going to be used for an automaton for the golden finch which is also really cool because it knocks down enemies and drops a bunch of expensive of rupees as well as letting you fly on it without it getting tired like most other echoes in the game now the cool part about the dancing outfit is that it increases your spin area here's what a spin looks like without it and here's what a spin looks like while wearing it now that you got your drip game up in echoes of wisdom you should check out this video on your screen right now